Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. In today's video, we will have some disgusting fun with long lances, and in the various different game modes, I had various different experiences with this tactic. What I'm talking about is, you pick the first destroyer that has 16 long lances, you fire the first spread of... 8, then you reload, then you do it again, you just simply bail out or you just give the kill to whoever hit you first. You do this with the second torpedo and then I go into the cruiser and that means that 48 torpedoes can be in the water. 48 metal fish, that is quite a lot and even if only 10% of them hit, uh, that is still quite a lot and you can see me here farming the... Um, all the AI ships but also some random catches with torpedoes and that is really fun. Now it is not so fun to get hit by them because frankly that's a one shot kill but it is effective, it helps your team to win the match especially in the encounter mode etc etc and the firepower of a lot of those Japanese ships is underwhelming either with the DPM or the ammunition. Now there is one extra special ship that is the IJN Agano and I really love this light cruiser. Battle rating 5.3 so it is supposedly the second generation of cruisers in War Thunder and it has overall 6 15 centimeter guns. They have a quick rate of fire, they turn relatively fast and that is really great. Oh I love those double kills by the way. And uh, it, it is still not good enough. It is still not really competitive, it even takes a while to kill a destroyer by the sheer volley and TNT that is in the broadside of the ship. Eventually you will win a fight, the precision of the guns is acceptable and good etc. But overall, you know, when you have to deal with Brooklyn's and multiple other cruisers, that is just not really competitive. But the long lances, they are a balancing factor in my opinion. But it is always down to the map, if the map allows for the spread or the wall of skill, if you will. And there you can see how it balances. I would have lost that gunfight, probably. And uh, the next match I show you in its entirety. And again, we spawn here with the reward ship from the 2019 Summer Event Marathon and that is the Operation Heat and that is the IJN New Dutchy. It also has 16 long lances aka the 610mm Type 93 torpedoes. I talked about this kind of torpedo quite a lot because it is just simply the best. It is the fastest as far as I can tell with 93 kilometers per hour and even if that is not the fastest it is still amongst the very fast but the very best definitely is the 20 kilometer range that is just outstanding and you have 16 of them and uh, you can make yourself a full lineup of three ships if you will that have them and as i said that's 84 metal fishes there are multiple multiple maps that allow for good use of this and for example uh, this map this is Mediterranean port in the encounter mode. I just bail out after I have dropped all the torpedoes. Now, where do I drop them? Do I just drop them wildly and hope for the best? No, 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 not really, because it comes down to the knowledge of the map, map design and just what the AI units do and or what the enemy players are very likely to do. There is this open stretch of water and nobody really want to use that part of the ocean except the biggest of cruisers. The overwhelming majority of people will go to the part of the map that normally is played by PT boats or in the other game mode so that you can close the distance that you, had, that you have covered that you can actually do something. And the AI units will go there, the players will go there and so you can really poison that sector of the map and if you do it right you have those uh, double spreads of four torpedoes. So 8 torpedoes in a wall of skill, tightly packed, launched in a perfect way so that the torpedoes run parallel and never cross each other open in the middle of the map. And that is very helpful for just filtering through the enemy team. I know this sounds disgusting, but historically speaking, this was also something that the Japanese ships did. And uh, they just launched huge volleys of torpedoes and especially early war. The Type 93 was just a weapon that the Allies didn't think could exist because they didn't really 
believe that the Japanese uh, industry is able to build such a weapon. On top of this being the fastest and long range and spread in numerous in, in huge quantities, uh, the Long Lance was also powered not just with air, but simply with oxygen, pure oxygen. So the engine that propelled the mighty Long Lance, the Type 93, also was kind of uh, invisible. So there were not the huge bubble trays that you are used to from other uh, torpedoes. So we bailed out out of our second destroyer and now we are in our last ship. And that is now the light cruiser, the IJN Agano. Now, the Agano is then a little bit of a wild card here. I don't use the torpedoes immediately on this map. And you can see so far I haven't achieved anything. I haven't achieved a hit, I haven't achieved a kill, nothing. And so uh, I get recognized in chat and why I J out, etc and uh, yeah the enemy will see now this is a tactic that i just tried out naval forces is in beta so i can do whatever i want as well trying to refine the playstyle etc now i said in the beginning that this tactic is kind of risky so how does this show well first of all if you then would need a torpedo after you have launched it you don't have it so that is something that has actually occurred to me when i closed the distance when suddenly two three four destroyers came around the corner and i was like damn it i don't have any torpedoes anymore despite them actually fulfilling their purpose of killing uh ai ships and also some random player hits um, at long range which gives your team a decisive advantage in my opinion especially in the encounter mode where those ai ships believe it or not are somewhat difficult to take down at long range and gachin has made here a good change to the encounter mode the ai ships move to a certain part of the map so they don't stand still at long range where then you know something like a kirov a brooklyn or other cruisers with good accuracy and hard hitting shells at long range could just take them down. The second most obvious downside to this tactic is that this third ship is now my last ship. If I die in this ship, I'm done for good, at least if I am, uh, if I intend to play a ship. So I only then could play some planes. And I'm not the hugest fan uh, or the greatest fan of, uh, of using planes in anything other than RRB where surprisingly enough I really like them. So here I try to close the distance and you can see we are for quite some time in the match and nothing has happened so uh, yeah five minutes into this match and my tactic has not paid off so far. Now finally I begin to use the guns and there you can see the high rate of fire and uh, the shells of the Agano well, there are more a bit like oversized destroyer shells. They are not really extremely hard hitting. The Brooklyn, for instance, with those uh, six inch guns has six kilos of TNT equivalent in the shells, 15 of them every six seconds. The IJN Agano, um, yeah, 2.71 kilograms. So not even half of this with just, ah, not even half the amount of of shells but the rate of fire is pretty quick so i like that about the ship it is fun you know it is not overpowered but i like to use it and uh, that is just what should be pointed out it's not always pure performance and oh this ship has this kind of rate of fire but i think that the brooklyn is a bit of a boring ship to play it is just this overkill monstrosity and if you don't have uh, success in it if you get uh, randomly one shot by a brooklyn or by a kirov or some stupid torpedo hit it is all the more annoying so you're kind of under this pressure of uh, have to have success not so much with this tactic either the success will come or not and uh, if you use the two premium ships the iJN Yudachi and also the iJN Kiyoshimo then the repair costs are quite low so overall you're looking at under 4000 repair costs for using those two destroyers and bailing out so here we deal with the first destroyer that was actually a player which is nothing uh, you know 
for certain, sadly, because there are so many bots. There are so many bots in War Thunder. Um, introduced by Gaijin to secure that the queue times are not absurdly long and to create matches at all. If that has something to do with the game mechanics, the map design and overall the balance and economy of naval forces, nah. <laughs> so yeah, slaughtering bots as a pastime is okay I guess. What is really annoying about this is when I made the missions for the uh, event marathon or the Operation Heat if you will was I got quite a huge number of torpedo kills, but they were all on bots and they didn't count. And uh, I used this three torpedo kill uh, task as one of the three. So, finally we come into effective gun range of the enemy fleet. And I don't want this, so I tried to hide behind this island. And this is where then uh, the magic slowly begins to happen. So the first cargo ship is down, which is great. And I continue to bombard here some destroyers. So slowly but surely the long lances have catched up with the enemy fleet. And we'll see if this will pay off. So then there are some destroyers. And I would love to launch some long lances into that direction. Uh, and to get more torpedo kills. But when they focus me I have to just kill them with gunfire. Or at least greatly disable them. There you can see. Uh, this Fletcher class has suffered already the loss of three of its five turrets, but you know, before too long he will actually repair them. Fire is coming my way and obviously it has hit the torpedo tube. God damn it. So I tried to launch here some torpedoes into the direction where I expect them to go. Um, the white uh, indicator line is not to be trusted under all circumstances. Especially if the enemy team tries to avoid the torpedoes, especially if the enemy team tries to slow down or ramps into an island, or if you destabilize the enemy's propulsion, even by hitting the funnels or hitting the engine room, the enemy ship will slow down considerable, so you have to adjust for this as well. I try to bombard here the enemies down because I cannot sustain all that much gunfire, and uh, I also want to launch the torpedoes and if they break my torpedo tubes all the time, which happens all the time, then yeah, nothing good will come of it. So we got our first kill here with gunfire and then we land a torpedo on the Fletcher, which is really satisfying. But there are still some more fish in the water. And I still have to deal here with those pesky destroyers. Now, I want to highlight here how awesome the accuracy is. So this will make up for a little bit of the lack of DPM and TNT filler in the shells. But still, compared to some other ships at this battle rating in terms of speed, armor, armament, etc. That is just not the very best. And we get another beautiful hit on a Fletcher. So that is just really satisfying. And so here I try to launch the rest of my torps. Again a torpedo tube is broken. How typical. <laughs> and now the AI ships seem to have stopped. So I aim some torpedoes right at them. And uh, also in the gaps between where then I expect some players to appear. So it's just waiting, trying to pick apart the enemies and at long range you can see that those small T-22 torpedo boats, they are really a uh, problem uh, to hit and to actually take down because they need to be blackened. Uh, a lot of the compartments need to be blackened. So here we get a nice gun kill again. But the actual fact is that um, one problem with the Agano is it doesn't have HE shell. It actually comes stock with flux shells and then you can upgrade to AP shells but those um, you know AG shells with uh, time delayed fuse sometimes they do funny things and we get another top kill on a cargo ship yeah sometimes they just explode if you don't uh, do the exact same range finding at longer ranges and uh, there is not too much that you can do about this so it's a bit random um, and that denies me here the killing blows on the T-22. Another torpedo hit on another cargo ship. That's also nice. So slowly but surely we gain an advantage. But you know, torpedoes work in two ways. And so 
I didn't really watch out for torpedoes myself and there I got killed by a wrench, a revenge torpedo from the grave from the Fletcher. And yeah, as you can see, I can no longer spawn here than with a ship. So that was the tactic that I wanted to show you. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that this is kind of an inspiration for you guys. And uh, if everything is right, I'm on my way to Vienna to watch a Rammstein concert. So rock on, boys and girls. And uh, I hope that you liked this video. Please give it a like if it did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies, and on the waves of War Thunder. Mm -hmm.